Nick for Candida Hub, and in this video we'll be talking about Candida glabrata treatment guidelines. So Candida glabrata, once called Torolopsis glabrata, is a yeast that normally lives commensally in your digestive system and vagina. And by commensal, I mean it typically doesn't cause any problems, just hangs out and uh, doesn't bother anybody. However, uh, when conditions are right, this yeast can overgrow and cause an infection. There are many different species of Candida. In the genus, Candida albicans is most commonly the cause of yeast infections. About 80% of all yeast infections are a result of Candida albicans. But uh, typically the second most common yeast infection cause is Candida glabrata. About 5% of all yeast infections are caused by Candida glabrata. So what predisposes you to getting a Candida glabrata infection? Well, antibiotics that wipe out the friendly probiotic bacteria in your vagina and digestive system can play a role and cause you to be more likely to contract a Candida glabrata yeast infection. If you've taken corticosteroids or estrogen birth control pills, you're also more likely to get this type of infection. But those individuals that struggle the most with Candida glabrata are typically people with a compromised immune system, such as HIV patients or people who have undergone surgical procedures or even if you have just a very severe sickness of some kind that weakens your immune system, you're more likely to uh, develop a Candida glabrata infection. A 2009 study published in the Korean Journal of Internal Medicine found that Candida glabrata was actually more dangerous to immunocompromised individuals than uh, Albicans was. The study found that 67% of people who develop candidemia which is a yeast infection of the blood, also known as fungemia, uh, died from this condition. So it is a serious issue if you have HIV, you just had surgery, or you have cancer, and you have candida glabrata somewhere in your body. Uh, it could lead to a blood infection, and that's quite a dangerous condition. So don't rely on the internet alone to uh, solve your problems, go to a doctor and make sure you get their opinion and professional medical advice. So even if you've been to a doctor and you have a prescription antifungal, you shouldn't rule out the use of natural medicines like essential oils completely. It's been proven that essential oils that have anti-candida activity augment prescription drugs they increase their power when used together. This can be important for Candida glabrata infections because they're innately more resistant to various antifungal drugs. So to overcome the natural resistance glabrata has, add some essential oils to your prescription drugs if you have them, and you should see better results using both types of therapies. But, if you're not an immunocompromised individual, a yeast infection really isn't too dangerous. You can use natural remedies to quickly solve your problem and uh, get rid of it for good. Candida Hub has a whole list of essential oils and herbs you can use to effectively fight a yeast infection. For more information about Candida glabrata and how to treat it, Check out the link right below in the description, or if you're at the site right now, just keep reading and you'll be able to find uh, links and resources to various clinical studies relating to this topic. And also, you can find out about a natural cure for yeast infections that's fast and safe and will completely get rid of a yeast infection in about 12 hours and even stop yeast infection recurrence, which is a problem for quite a few people. Thanks for watching and I hope this answered some of your questions about Candida glabrata infections.